Hey guys, um, instead of doing video notes for uh, Friday, April 3rd, I'm going to kind of give you a state of the union for the AP exams and tests and kind of let you know what's going on. I'm going to read you information from College Board as far as how they're formatting your test and what they're doing. Your new test date is now May 13th, um, and your time for Central Standard Time is 3 p.m. They're saying that they want you to be on the, the website before, about a half hour before, so you want to get on about 2.30 that day. But May 13th is the day you want to schedule yourself to take this test. Um, well, it's basically your only option unless you take the makeup day. Um, so let's kind of go through and discuss what they're doing. And also, by the way, they're, they're saying you can do it on a computer. Uh, you can do it on a tablet or by phone. And what they're saying they're, they're going to let you do is you can handwrite this. You can just get loose leaf paper out, look at the prompt, handwrite it, and then just take photo, photos from your phone and, and submit it that way. So that's that's the way you can use your phone if you'd rather not even fool a computer and, and use it uh, typing if, if that's not what you want to do. So here's the information they put out for European history. Students will be given 45 minutes to read and respond to a question one and then five minutes to upload the response. So that's it. You get one basic DBQ. That's all. Nothing else. And you'll have 45 minutes to write it and then five minutes to upload it if, if need be. Uh, it's 100% of your grade. It's a modified DBQ, so it's not the full rubric. Um, but it'll be a modified version of the rubric. So this question presents students with five historical sources, one of which will be a non-text-based source. This question assesses students' ability to respond to the prompt with historical defensible thesis or a claim that establishes a line of reasoning, describe a broader historical context relevant to the prompt, support an argument in response to the prompt using at least four documents. So before you had to use six out of seven. Now you're only using four out of five, which is amazing. So you only have to use four documents they're giving you, and that's it. Um, use at least two additional pieces of specific historical evidence beyond that found in the documents. So that's different. You have to use two outside sources or outside information that you didn't have in the documents. Now, what they're telling you, and, and this is what they wrote in their information, is that this is open notebook. They understand this is going to be a, basically an open notebook exam, and that's totally fine. So I heavily, heavily encourage you to have everything laid out, everything ready to go, um, like all your notes kind of, you know, from the year or if you want the Princeton Review guides to be out. That way, if you need to go pluck specific names or examples, uh, it can be there for you, essentially. So have all that ready, but it has to be ready. You only have 45 minutes, so it has to be, all, be out and ready for you to do that if that's what you want to do. For at least two documents, explain how or why the document's point of view, purpose, historical situation, and or, and or audience is relevant to an argument. That's PPHA. We were getting into this right in, in the semester whenever we were writing that last essay. Basically, you have to address point of view, purpose, historical situation, or audience for, for in this case, only two documents. I suggest doing three just to be safe, but for two of the documents, you're going to address those issues. If you want to just say purpose, purpose, purpose each time, that's fine. You don't have to change it up. It can be the same exact thing every single time. Point of view or audience, switch it up however you want to do it. But if you want to say the audience for this was, the audience for this was, that's totally fine. Use evidence to corroborate, co corroborate modify, or uh, qualify an argument that addresses the prompt. So that's it. That's all you're doing is writing this one DBQ that's modified in 45 minutes. Uh, the DBQ format, the prompt for the 2020 modified DBQ may be derived from units 1 through 7. So that's Renaissance all the way up through the end of period 3, which is basically right before World War I. And will include only five documents, and you only have to use four. The rubric will be lightly modified to match the reduced number of documents awarding one point for using two documents and an additional point for using four documents. An additional point will be awarded for effectively incorporating a second piece of outside knowledge into the argument. Students can earn two points for sourcing one point per each document. So you will not have any information taken from units eight through nine, which is everything World War I or later. The makeup date for this is June 2nd. Central time is 1 p.m. So that's your options. Um, what we're going to do now, too, as a result, since we don't have to press as, as hard since you have until uh, May 13th, is that you, we're just going to do uh, notes now Monday through Thursday. There's no, there's no real reason to do it five days a week. We can just go down to four, and then if we need to change it later on, we'll change it later on. But as of right now, we're just planning to do it uh, four days a week. So no notes today. Uh, since we're going to have a video conference on Monday, well, there will be no notes on Monday, and then we'll just kind of pick up a review after that date on Tuesday and go from there. Um, at this point, you know, just kind of email me if you have questions. Uh, let me know if you have anything you need to kind of clarify. But you have a month. You still have a month left, more than a month, to prepare for this exam. So please, please, please take it seriously and make sure you get yourself ready. 
uh, for the exam, you can do this. Look, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity, especially for you seniors. I know you're done. I know you know that this the school is basically over and it for you. But listen, you have a chance of getting. And this is not just for me. This is for all your classes. You have an open notes AP test instead of a three hour test. You're taking a one forty five minute test, and that's it. And it's open notes, and so you can get a four or five the same way as you would normally with this once in a lifetime opportunity. So please don't waste this opportunity. You can all do it. All of you are very skilled and very well prepared. Please uh, take take this seriously and do it where the test day comes around. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. One more thing I want to say before we leave off is the cheating. Uh, they did mention the fact that they're going to use a lot of sophisticated software to check and detect cheating. If you try to get into a group and try to, to do anything related to cheating uh, with working together, they're going to discover it and they're going to ban you from any other type of tests, club tests, SATs, anything like that. Um, which, you know, you might end up having to take one of those tests from College of War in the future, uh, even for like grad school or something like that. So, like, you know, you don't want to do anything on, the, on those lines. So, anyway, um, y'all have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Hopefully, see all of you. Uh, we'll see you then.